On the trail is independent and issue driven. Whether we're on the data trail researching inconvenient truths or leaving no stone unturned in public access to our public waters and lands controversies, or engaging in the interconnected, tough and timely conversations of, let's say, open government, citizenship, and the always controversial political trails. We are equipped with science, law, and history. We're going to be clearing those trails for critical thinking from the obstructions of opinion, biopolitics, false equivalency, and outright lies. Why? Because the corrupt are eagerly dismantling and destroying our democracy and natural resources. Shouldn't we be passionately defending those truths? As the saying goes, neutrality in the face of such oppression is complicity. Thank you for joining On the Trail. I'm Catherine Connayao. This episode's guest is a Bozeman friend and fellow technology lover, Kelly Cordham. Kelly is a Bozeman progressive activist. He's also the vice chair of the Gallatin County Democrats. Kelly is going to share with us his recent experience with their statewide platform convention and some of the planks they added to their platform. Yeah, thank you, Catherine. I'm excited to be here. I I have a quote that I'd like to open this um, podcast episode with. This was by Robert Kennedy. And he said, since the days of Greece and Rome, when the word citizen was a title of honor, we have often seen more emphasis put on the rights of citizenship than on its responsibilities. I'd like uh, you to share your perspectives of why it's important to get involved on the grassroots level, county levels, working upward as an aspect of politics not being a spectator sport. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to talk about this subject. Um, I personally have have heard a lot of chatter about how the parties aren't doing what we want and how do we get them to do what we want. And this is exactly how you do it is you get involved with things like platform conventions, like things like local caucuses or your primaries for for your candidates. It it all involves us, the citizens, the, the normal people being involved in pushing our will up to our representatives who we elect. So I think, yeah, civic responsibility is a big part of being a citizen, and that's a big part of why I'm involved in. Not and just to vote or vote even in a midterm, but to participate at the local levels of the go- creating the government of the people, uh, by the people, for the people. Absolutely. Yeah, voting is kind of the, the level one entry point to your own civic activism. It's it's the lowest amount of time spent um, and the highest amount of power gained for an action. And if you apply that and then learn and then advance, you can have a big impact on your local government. And then through that, eventually on your state government, and then maybe your elected officials from the federal level will start listening to you when you start doing good works like that. So getting involved is, is all about it, and it starts with voting. Well, I noticed that when I moved here to Montana, in order to actively participate in conservation, I had to register to vote again. I had not registered to vote since Texas Um, where I was a registered Republican, and then I started doing more research on the bills, the voting records, uh, things along this line, and I ended up becoming an independent, which I remain to this day. I'm I'm issue-driven voter. Other than my high school freshman year of politics, where we were dealing with a mock convention, uh, working on a platform, I have not had any experience. So if you could explain some of the basics of what goes on with the convention and what a platform is and what the planks in a platform are. Sure. So every year, the parties have, or every every year, or every other year in our case, um, the parties have a convention where delegates from all across the state of Montana come together and discuss what the general beliefs of the party are. In my case, um, I went to the Montana Democratic um, Convention, platform convention, and it it involved central committees, which are the local county committees, and four representatives from each, and then a lot of the ally organizations, say the MEA, MFT, our conservation allies um, get delegates to to send to the platform convention as well. And at the platform convention, you decide what what your general beliefs are as a party. 
And then you all stand on that platform together and espouse that, oh, the Montana Democrats believe the statement, say, health care is a human right. That is a statement that is approved by all of you as a general belief for the, the Democrats in the state. So with this platform, it's divided out into many different like issues and topics, so say, public education, conservation, and each one of these little topics is called a plank because it's kind of cute. Uh, of course, planks make up a platform. <laughs> it's, a, a literal, uh, let's, for example, for the, the listeners, as yeah. imagining a uh, platform being built out of wood, and the whole of the platform is the, the party platform, and each one of those planks are those issues. Yes. Yep. Each issue uh, sets a little portion of the platform and altogether um, taken as a whole, it is the general beliefs of the Montana Democrats as voted on in, in a very democratic way. And I think that's uh, it's it's a beautiful aspirational document that kind of helps us all agree which direction we're headed. Kind of like and, the sideboards on a pickup truck. It's it's what's contained within the sideboards. Sure. That's yeah, that's exactly. your yep. your everything in between that we stand on. Yes. Kelly, you just recently participated at the Montana Democrat Convention. Can you explain what y'all did in this particular convention? Yes. So two years ago, I attended the 2016 platform convention for the Montana Democrats. Um, it was kind of my first party event ever, and I was a also a delegate for a presidential nominee. And that's how I kind of got into the whole business anyway. So two years ago, I saw the process and I got really excited by it. Uh, it's very democratic and it's very nuanced um, for being a non-binding document and helping to kind of create this platform together. It's There's just so much fun detail and there's not enough participation in it. So uh, I'm trying to encourage more people to show up every year. And this year we had uh, four four attendees from the Gallatin County Democrats that were very excited to go. And boy, did we learn a lot and, and have a lot of fun and use our previous knowledge to, to actually change some stuff this time. So we sent our four delegates and then we had one from the state party. And then we met a lot of allies that we had out on from, from the area as well, from our partner organizations. And Together, we had all these little separate plank meetings, and then we came together as a whole on the final day and approved the general ones, because you can't attend every plank because there's so many issues that we talk about. But on the final day, you all get to do a yes or no vote on each uh, each plank's changes, and that adds another layer of accountability and make sure we tru- truly all believe that and that these that some like less popular stuff doesn't make it through, I guess. So it, it's there's two layers of democracy on it. I think that's kind of beautiful, too. So what were some uh, of the specific issues that y'all discussed that you added, the different planks that were sure. added to this convention? The way this process began for us is we, we received word from the state party that they were gathering amendments so they could submit them, and then we could we could defend them at the convention. So my work actually started about three months ago when we had to start thinking about what things really mattered to us and what was missing from our platform. So first we all read it and decided things that we thought were missing. Then we asked our local central committee if they agreed with us and that these things were missing. So we had to craft some language and then check with our allies, say in Missoula and Billings and see what they were up to. So we didn't like duplicate efforts. Then after the, the local committee approved this, we submitted them to the state and the Gallatin County Democrats submitted 10 amendments to the state convention. And when we were all said and done, we, we got five of them approved. We covered all sorts of topics, health care, civil rights, free and fair democracy, one person, one vote, public lands. There, we I think we had six or seven total topics um, with those 10 amendments. So we, we were a pretty general group, and, and it was really helpful getting feedback from the community about what we chose to uh, address at the convention. What were some of the issues that you were most interested in? Yeah, um, I was really fired up and have been for the last uh, two years since since the Bernie Sanders primary convention about health care as a human right and, and putting that language into our platform because I believe that most Democrats believe that being a citizen of a civilized country, uh, you should never have to worry about going bankrupt due to illness. And I, I think if we put that in our platform, it helps all of us kind of keep that in our minds when we're talking about health care. And I know health care is a huge issue when we're knocking on doors for candidates. So we end up both talking and thinking about that a lot. And it's, fi- it's nice to finally see health care as a human right in our platform. 
another one of my pet issues is uh, is net neutrality. That that interests me a lot, and I think I think the internet is the largest free speech engine ever created, and I think the loss of net neutrality will allow more money voices to dominate the conversation. So I thought it was important to to codify the thought that information and, and the freedom of information is an important right we have as citizens and we need to protect it. So that language that you sent me a copy of what y'all did at the convention stated, we support net neutrality and the ability for all Montanans to access a free and open internet, which is essential to innovation and competitive economy. Yes, actually, there were two uh, net neutrality, actually three total net neutrality statements that passed and made it into the new the new platform. That one in particular was from a candidate from Missoula named Katie Sullivan, and that, that's uh, one of two that spe- yeah, that's the one of the three that specifically mentions net neutrality, and in this case when it when it mentions innovation, it's uh, that one's in the jobs plank. Another one that we had was, we support freedom of speech, press, and universal access to information through any media, including the internet, which is the more civil rights version of the argument and we put both of them in there and everybody well most most everybody agreed that those are essential statements to believe in the democratic platform i think they are extremely essential in fact recently i have been putting out information there were some segments of books and i need to sit down and finish i'm juggling like five books at one time on different Mm -hmm. subjects right now but hannah arndt who was born in germany went through some of what was going on during that debacle over there with the totalitarian regime uh, started researching totalitarian regimes hannah arndt wrote in 1951 the origins of totalitarianism a number of statements that she makes in there having studied the subject across europe and other countries is the aspect of free press we absolutely need a free press that is not a shadow of a a state organized press that repeats only what the authoritarian dictatorship regime allows to go out but an absolute free press this has come up recently numerous times in our our national political discussions about the importance of a free press the fourth estate Mm -hmm. and i believe that the internet is an aspect of that i was very pleased to see governor bullock make the statements that he did to help support net neutrality in montana after it was overturned at the federal level because I have a website. I also do a tremendous amount of research online. And if I can't get to those websites, if I can't get the speed in order to do that research, it tremendously limits and hinders my ability to become an informed member of the public and to share that information with other members of the public. I certainly uphold on net neutrality on that. So I thank you all for including that as a, a civil rights aspect, as well as a jobs aspect in the convention. Yes, thank you. I believe it is one of the most important things that we don't talk about enough. And that's why I particularly chose it to make an amendment about is it was underrepresented in in the amount of things we were talking about, because there's so much to talk about right now. As we were discussing, we had a dozen topics at least to to drill down into each and and giving this one some attention really felt felt good and timely. We've had a lot of discussions about democracy in the last two or three years and the systems that we use to elect our representatives and a lot of them are archaic and out of date and and no longer work so free and fair democracy was huge to me i i believe that one person should stand all the time for a free and fair democracy uh if people are able to spend their uh, their wealth influencing voters then that's not quite as fair with the the one person one vote aspect so i suggest suggested an amendment to add on to the the statement we support open free and transparent elections including montana's open primary election and then the language i i wanted to add was um, which encourage open participation by all citizens acknowledging that one person's voting power is equivalent to every others and and the theory behind that one was it would allow us to start addressing these undemocratic institutions say the the national republicans um have winner take all primaries that is when a candidate for a primary gets the most 
votes, they get 100% of the delegates from that state, which is pretty undemocratic to, it could be 49% of, or in, in a split primary, it could be much, a very small amount of people wanted a candidate, yet that candidate got all the delegates from that state. It's the same with um, super delegates for the, the Democratic primaries. Right. Um, in Montana, one, one super delegate had the voting power of 10,000 Montana Democrats. I don't think that's very democratic. And one final example that's very glaring is the Electoral College. A voter in Wyoming state has more than three and a half times voting power as somebody in California yes. because of, of the proportion of electoral votes. All of these things aren't super democratic, yet they still exist because it's the way it's always been. And I think it's time we start addressing those. So I uh, I promoted that language and, and we got it passed in in the good government sec plank. Excellent. I also see that y'all supported the overturning of Citizens United. Yeah, that's a that's a exciting one. Um, there was there was no mention of Citizens United in our, our platform before, um, and it was clearly timed. So I believe that one was presented by the Montana Progressive Democrats, Missoula, or Center to Missoula, and that that language was very simple. It was in, I believe, in the good government plank. It just we support the overturning of Citizens United. Pretty straightforward, and there was no disagreement in the room when it was discussed. Everybody said just kind of nodded and voted it in because it was clear that it belonged there. Yes, we, we've all seen the, and Montana has a horrible history in the past of trying to buy votes, of money controlling, replacing our democracy. The dark money aspect of Citizens United is so overwhelming. In fact, this next Friday begins here in Helena, the dark money movie that was produced starting with some of the cases that were occurring here in Montana in the news with the journalist. What was going on, uh, the uncovering of this. So this documentary, I am hoping, will become more widespread and people will get a really good overview of what has been transpiring and what we need to do to fight back. Uh, and Citizens United is a part of that, that money does not equal free speech and corporations are not people. Absolutely. And I and I hear that uh, one of our local uh, Gallatin County Republicans is featured in that, that film. <laughs> that the dark documentary, film. yeah. <laughs> I've, I've heard snippets. I'm very anxious for this movie. I've been promoting it all over my Twitter feed and in my <laughs> newsletters because I want people to get out there and see this and see what is uh, going on. It'd be great we can get this mainstreamed like on Netflix or on the internet where people will be able to view it remotely because some people are not near the larger cities in order to be able to watch it. That's a, a key thing that I feel is going to help to restore some of the nibbling to death by ducks uh, against our democracy that has been taking place mm. and occurring. <laughs> One of the other um, platforms that the planks that I would like to discuss on here, and, and this is extremely involved in a lot of the conservation work that I do uh, dealing with the public trust doctrine, is that of the public lands. The language that I see here says that we oppose the transfer or the transfer of management of federal land to state county or private control. For me, I think this is huge because in the 2016 Republican convention, one of their planks that they voted in on the federal level, it was on page 28 of a 66-page document that reads, quote, the federal government owns or controls over 640 million acres of land in the United States, most of which is in the West. These are public lands, and the public should have access to them for appropriate activities like hunting, fishing, and recreational shooting. Federal ownership or management of land also places an economic burden on the counties and local communities in terms of lost revenue to pay for things such as schools, police, and emergency services. It is absurd to think that all that acreage must remain under the absentee ownership or management of official Washington. Congress shall immediately pass universal legislation providing for a timely and orderly mechanism requiring the federal government to convey certain federally controlled public lands to states, 
we call upon all national and state leaders and representatives to exert their utmost power and influence to urge the transfer of those lands identified in the review process to all willing states for the benefit of the states and the nation as a whole. Now, in the Montana Republican platform, on page 13, it reads, Federally Managed Public Lands. The Montana Republican Party supports the U.S. Congress and the U.S. President, other public officials and citizens of Montana and the United States to fully exert their efforts and powers to support returning federally managed public lands to the states in order to secure statehood equality and provide for better management of public lands. Now, not only does the whole concept of transferring federal public lands to the states irk me because as a citizen, as a member of the public, we all jointly own that. It is managed by the federal government in certain agencies or it's managed on the state level uh, on the state lands. But there's a lie in this Montana one because it specifically states to re- to exert their efforts and powers to support returning. Mm-hmm. The state of Montana only received certain amount of lands given to them at statehood. The rest of this federally managed land, that never belonged to the state in the first place. It is nothing that they have to be returned. It's part of the Sagebrush Rebellion lie to give back or to return as though it were a taking that they had uh, done eminent domain in order to take that land in the first place. And now it should be given back to its rightful owner. Well, it wasn't. Through treaties or cessation or annexations, Most of the land in the West was federal, and it did not belong to the states in the beginning. They received certain portions at statehood, and a number of those states have sold off to private interest those lands that they received. Now they want more. They they want what is jointly held in common for us. So I greatly appreciate what y'all did in this because you also have another plank that says we support protecting access to public lands and streams so that montana's outdoor heritage can be enjoyed by all montanans and future generations so y'all had some really great public trust doctrine language that is being added to your platform yeah i think that that's uh, a sign that that people are starting to pay more attention and get more involved that this language is finally making it in here because it's, it's clearly been an issue for a while um, but but it's finally making it into our platform so we can we can point to our platform when when we're saying why we should elect more uh, Democrats in this case um, the language is in here and and it's clear that more, a majority of us um, believe it these are uh, issues that for Montana which has the nickname last best place are not only the quality of life, the values that we uphold here, but it's also economic. It is a huge economic driver, one of the leading economic drivers in this state. I feel not only does it need to be maintained and protected for future generations, but the access to it, because without the access, you know, somebody else is holding title to the land, the federal government in uh, a particular case, let's say the Forest Service, But if that access is being cut off, the public doesn't have access to their publicly owned lands. So we're constantly fighting against access issues here in Montana as, um, in some cases, some out-of-state landowners, whether through ignorance or intention, have erected illegal blockades, um, whether it's on to our rivers and streams or whether it's to the public lands themselves. One thing that I really object to in the transfer to states is that the state's rights are not as broad and inclusive as our federal public land and access rights are. So transferring from the federal, which is much more inclusive, to a state level is not even as good a protection and much worse if they decide they're going to sell some of those off and then you lose them forever they become privatized Mm -hmm. there's actually a pretty good story about that little that little snippet in there that we that we have or the transfer of management of federal land that was the crafting of that language was really uh, very democratic and i like talking about it because because of that what happened was when we ask our our locals 
Gallatin County Democrats to approve our language, there was a problem with that one in that it didn't, somebody brought up that it didn't mention the transfer of management either, because that's uh, some very key language and it, it means a great deal legally. So yes. uh, somebody wrote back and said, I like this one, but let's add the words or the transfer of management of federal lands to state county or private control and it was it was resoundingly accepted and so just asking our local community what they thought got us some good feedback and helped us improve that language to get it playing so now you mentioned that before that was democracy clint was, nagel correct yeah um clint was one of the key proponents for for uh suggesting that language yes and, and i want to thank um, clint he's He's on my newsletter list for being cognizant of that and not leaving loopholes open <laughs> yep, <laughs> along it's that good line. good to have experienced people uh, have a look, and that's exactly how democracy is supposed to work, in my opinion. It was very beneficial in, in this respect. Is there mm-hmm. anything else that you would like to share on the convention, the platform process? I, I think the... The platform convention is a necessary part of democracy. In in the platform convention, we're writing this aspirational document. So everything that we agree on is uh, a handshake, an agreement amongst like-minded people that this is the direction we want to travel in. There's nothing in law. We didn't write any any legislation. We just explain to everybody that's interested in, in civics what our civic beliefs are. And I think that's a necessary thing to reevaluate every few years. And I'm really glad that they that the Montana Democrats host this convention every two years because it, it gets us all thinking about what our part in democracy is. So I was just really excited to attend and partake and train new people in, in the process because that's another thing that gets lost a lot is it's very similar to lawmaking in, in that you have to know parliamentary procedure. You have to know that your language matters when proposing stuff. So it just encourages sharpening those those civic skills that a lot of us haven't used since high school. <laughs> I, I had not. <laughs> 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 I realized, especially in the advocacy work that I do, I can't just deal with conservation. Conservation doesn't happen in a bubble. I have to get more involved in the political process. I have to discuss politics more and how they affect everything from the county commission level up to the national level, all of what our values are in reference to our our public trust. That is why I was really excited when we had discussions concerning what happened at this last convention. I was like, oh, can I please get you on a podcast explaining some of this? I think there needs to be more participation and more inclusivity of the demos, the, the public. So is there, what, what would you advise to the general public of how can they get more involved at this local level? How does it become more of government by the people for the people? How do they become more of the by the people? Sure, that's that's a great question, and, and it's one of the, my favorite things to talk about. Um, getting involved in politics, getting involved civilly, uh, starts with you. The, and as I said earlier, the most time-efficient thing you can to exercise your civic power is to vote. After that, there's a ton of things you can do, but it all involves showing up and attending events, local forums, and debates, and city council meetings, and it all involves getting locally and learning how where where you think you could fit in there and then once you know how applying that force and pushing it upwards you have a lot more power at the local level and if you get all the locals speaking in one direction you can put pressure um on on the state level so your county level is the first place to start i would absolutely start at the city or county level when getting civically involved so start by voting Then start attending commission meetings, county commission meetings, um, city commission meetings, local party meetings, like with a a political party. These are the places where you'll learn not only the process for getting involved, but what the barriers are. Once you're educated on those, you can continue your work in either lowering those barriers or working on your issue or getting a local person that that is really competent elected or or something like that it all starts at the very local level and that's i think that's the message we we are trying to put out to um everybody that's concerned about the direction our country is going in right now is get involved locally here in 10 years you could be a senator who knows (laughs) politics is not a spectator sport absolutely 
Well, thank you so much, Kelly. I greatly appreciate your time and your participation. And I absolutely love the values that I fight so hard for that y'all included quite a number of those into your platform, the various planks. Thank you, Clint Nagel, (laughs) for that management wording in there and the county level, because this is part of the battle, the opposition that we are seeing the move to privatize. So thank you so much for your participation and explanations. No, thank you for letting me talk about democracy a little bit. It was it was great to chat with you. The views expressed by guests are not necessarily those of On the Trail. If you would like to participate in On the Trail, if you have a story to tell, a suggestion, or perhaps a contributor you would like to share, shoot me an email. Catherine, K-A-T-H-R-Y-N, at E-M-W-H dot org. That's Echo Mike Whiskey Hotel dot org. Click subscribe to receive the On the Trail podcast RSS notifications when a new episode is released. You can also subscribe to the EMWH newsletter at the same email address. Just type subscribe in the subject line. For more information, check out the Enhancing Montana's Wildlife and Habitat website at emwh.org and find me on Twitter at E-M-W-H-O-R-G. Thank you.